doing carnivore in Thailand. Welcome. Just wanted to give you a little update on what's going on here. I want to give you a success story. We went to Bangkok Auto Show two days ago. Drove to Bangkok, went to the auto show, look around, and they have something generally just to do. Went to this auto show, and I remember they have a food court inside of the impact center. I didn't like the food last time I was there. I still don't think the food's anything to write home about. But they have these tables and chairs set where you sit. And the tables and chairs are made out of wood and steel. And the chairs are mounted to the steel frame like an old-fashioned picnic table from America used to be where you can't move the seat back away from the table and you couldn't move the table away from the seat. And that's all right if you're a normal sized person, but when you're as fat as I was, and I say was because last time I was there, I couldn't sit in them. I could not get my big ass belly in front between the chair and the seat. There was enough room. Remember, the Thai are generally smaller, uh, smaller group of people. But I couldn't get in there. I couldn't even sit and I couldn't even eat. So I had to like sit on the side of the seat and stick my ass out in the aisle and, and just do what I had to do and I, barely ate anything when I was there and just said, screw it. And, but anyway, I went back this week and I saw them tables. And I said, uh, but then I just sat down, got right in there and my belly didn't, wasn't touching. And I have lost so much in the front of my lower abdomen around my belly button. The distance it sticks out from from my backbone and spine is just so much smaller that I was able to sit in that seat and uh, we found some beef in some sort of uh, beef sauce and they had vegetables and things. So we asked him for the beef just by itself. Uh, and just ate the beef. And then they had chicken too. They cut up a couple pieces of chicken. It sucked. But the beef wasn't too bad. Some of it was very tender because they slow cook it in a liquid broth in big pots. There's this one restaurant I know in Bangkok. They cook pork and beef in this big, big five foot across pot that they've kept on the fire. And they put the new material, the new stock of beef and pork and vegetables on one side of the pot and they stir it and then they create little bowls and sell them. And uh, believe it or not, they claim that this pot has been going nonstop for like 40 years. I mean, it's like they sell, people line up around a block to get this stuff. Interesting place. Well, anyway, uh, that was my success story. I was able to sit in a chair I couldn't get into and eat a little bit. Lately, been doing a lot of running around and Actually, we're looking to see if we can't find a pickup truck to purchase. Not because we actually need a pickup truck. Nobody wants to learn how to drive in one. But, uh, Noy's got a house up in Isan. And her parents actually have a little business where they 
process and sell food at the local market. And they don't have a, an actual truck or car. They have one of these little motorcycles with the side with the sidecar on it that acts like trucks around Thailand for a lot of people. Well, a pretty sunny day like today, that's not all bad. But when they have to go miles and the weather's super, super bad, like raining and just a bad day, that's really terrible. So, believe it or not, the trucks here in Thailand are the most popular vehicle going. And the prices on trucks here are... I guess I'm going crazy because I see all these things where people are, in America are spending fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 on a new pickup truck and things like that, the new ones. They've got Toyota sells a truck that's only sold in Thailand. And I'm not looking at that kind of truck because it's very utilitary. But they actually sell this truck for about 13,000 US dollars, brand spanking new. And it's a diesel two seat truck with a small bed. And you know, it's a small truck, but I mean, it's not like uh, these trucks are sixty, seventy thousand uh, dollars. You can you can actually get you can actually get a two year old Toyota diesel pickup, air conditioning, manual transmission. Uh, power windows, power seats, and and that sort of thing. Maybe two years old. You can actually get them for ten thousand U.S. dollars, which is not a bad price, really. But we've been looking for one like that to help her family do better. And uh, for people who've never been to Thailand tidbit from Thailand here family over here is more important than I've ever seen in the United States uh, it's just different I don't know whether it's their Buddhist philosophies because this country is like 90 plus percent 95 plus percent Buddhist uh, but children take care of parents and parents take care of children and abandonment here in Thailand is just not the same as it is in the United States. I mean, you would never find, uh, I shouldn't ever say the word never because there's always exceptions, but just <laughs> in America, kids grow up, they start a family, and then, eh, so much for the parents. I don't have time. Remember the old Cat Stevens songs? Uh, were, I forget what the name of the song was. Oh boy, leave it in the comments. The one where he doesn't have, dad never had time for the kid and then the kid never has time for dad. Gee, dad, I'd like to, but I'm doing something else. What was it? T for, it was on the T for the Tiller Man album, I thought. But, uh, uh, I grown up just like you, is what it is. 
Gee, I've grown up just like you. Well, here they grow up just like their parents do, but their parents seem to try to care more. So I guess when they grow up, uh, they try to do the best they can. I don't know. Maybe people aren't even interested in this. Maybe I should just not even say anything about it. Yesterday, what did we have for lunch was ribeye. Not a lot of ribeye. Maybe eight ounces of ribeye. And dinner, ribeye. Not a lot of ribeye. Maybe eight ounces of ribeye. And man, I don't know if, if there's one thing that you ever want to try, I don't even care if you don't go carnivore, but if you ever want to cook a steak at home, you need to figure out and go to the store, Amazon or somewhere, and buy yourself a sous vide so you can cook at low temperature or a set temperature and set it the way you want. Now, I've been using 57 and a half degrees Celsius. And I've been cooking those steaks for at least 24 hours now in the sous vide. And when you come out, they don't come out brown. They come out just this beige color. And you have to season them up and put them on a, on a grill or on a skillet, some air fryer, something to sear the outside to give it that fresh off the uh, grill steak feel and taste. And you sear the uh, the fat, but the fat of the meat is what makes the meat taste so great. And by cooking it for 24 hours, it really tenderizes a lot of the fat and makes it taste great and eat great. So, no matter what you do, if you want to cook a steak that just melts in your mouth, start with a good quality steak, but then get yourself a sous vide machine, set it up, let it cook for 24 hours, and then put it in a fridge and let it get good and cold, and then sear it. Don't take it out and sear it right away, because the inside of that steak's got a heat in it, and you end up going from medium rare to medium or medium to well done and you don't want that. So you want to keep it where you want it. So you get the inside good and cold and you get your grill good and hot or your skillet good and hot. And you throw it in there with a uh, little salt, pepper, whatever you want to season it with. Lately it's for us, it's almost just been salt. I mean, you know, Put salt on a good steak. It's great. It's sort of like salt on uh, honey. Honeydew millen used to taste good. Of course, we don't. I don't eat any vegetables or or fruit right now. And uh, that lion scale, <laughs> it's still lion. But so anyway. More exciting things to come, including uh, next week, we're going to be going on a small trip to northern Thailand. I'll post a few videos from up there. We'll be up in the Udon Thani area, Udon Thani area, and... Uh, Google Maps says that's eight and a half hour drive, but they're full of shit. It'll take 11. So we'll get back to you some new video. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments. I love reading them. I love answering them. <laughs>